Hello, and welcome to our lesson on Precision DAX. In this video, we will talk about the major difference between update rate and settling time of a DAC, and then talk about how fast you can update the DAC. So how fast can you update a DAC? Depending on who you talk to, this question can mean a number of things. First, let's define what settling time means in a DAC. Settling time in a DAC is very similar to the settling time of an amplifier, but with one key addition, the dead time. Dead time refers to the time that it takes for the update signal to cause the DAC to enter the slew region. Now that we understand settling time, let's look at the other half of the update rate story, the digital interface. This will be the SPI, I squared C, or parallel interface that tells the DAC what the next value is. The timing characteristics can be a little intimidating when you don't know what to look for. Sometimes you do have to look at each specification to get the absolute maximum performance from the digital interface. However, trying to calculate the maximum update rate is much easier. The example here is of a simple three-wire SPI interface. It consists of S-Clock, SDI, and CS. SDI contains the data that the DAC is going to read, while CS is low. Depending on the DAC, the device will latch the data in during the falling or rising edge of S-Clock. In this example, the latch occurs during the rising edge of S-Clock. In the case of this simple SPI interface, Instead of using all of the timing values, we need to look at only four specifications. S-clock period, falling of CS to the first latch, last latch to the rising of CS, and min CS high time. This is the equation we will use. Notice that only one of the four timing specs are used in the calculation, but not because the other specs are meaningless. This is where looking at the diagram carefully comes in. If you notice, there is a perfect overlap between the S-clock period and the falling edge of CS to the first latch, so we can disregard the contribution from the falling edge of CS to the first latch. The same is the case with the last latch. Finally, we can disregard the minimum CS high time because we are allowing our DAC to settle, which will more than overlap this time. Note that the calculation here is just a shortcut, not an exhaustive calculation. If you need to be 100% accurate, you need to carefully scrutinize the datasheet timing diagrams, as some of the specifications will have overlap. Now let's put the two pieces together. For display purposes, let's call the digital update time plus the settling time DS. This is going to be the maximum time for you to update the DAC and let it completely settle. Now let's ask the question, what is the maximum frequency that we can generate at the output? It will depend on the waveform you are trying to generate. For example, a square wave. The square wave only requires 2 ds to complete a cycle, so we get a frequency of 1 over 2 times ds. If we wanted a sine wave, however, the number of ds is required is going to increase, decreasing the overall sine frequency. The digital update time is usually much smaller than the settling time. Taking the digital update rate from the previous example, we had digital update time of 320 nanoseconds. Compare that to an 8 microsecond settling time of a buffered DAC, and the bottleneck is clear. So in order to get the best performance, we are going to need a device that can have a very fast interface, like a parallel interface, with very fast settling time, like an MDAC. An example of this kind of device is the DAC 8820, so let's compare it to a SPI interface buffered DAC. Let's first look at the parallel interface. It has four major parts the read-write pin, the data pins, the load DAC pin, and the reset pin. If we are trying to toggle this interface as fast as it will go, we can probably tie the read-write pin and the reset pin and disregard them for our calculation. If you look at the timing diagram for this device, you see that we only need to worry about TDS and TLDAC. However, for our equation, we will disregard TLDAC as well. That time period is again overlapped by the DAC settling time, leaving only the data setup time to factor into the equation. As you can see, the best update rate is obtained from the 35 nanosecond parallel interface time coupled with the unbuffered settling time of 500 nanoseconds from an MDAC. As always, there are trade-offs to trying to run a DAC at its fastest update rate, but these calculations will give you an idea of how fast you can go. Thank you for watching this video on maximizing your precision DAC update rate. Please watch our other videos on precision DACs or go to ti.com precisiondac to learn more.